the Singleton of Dufton Sunray. Straight away, the first thing you'll notice is uh, there is no age statement on this. There is, however, a lovely banner at the bottom giving you some of the ideas of what the flavour profile will be. Smooth, honeyed, intense. This whisky was designed to give you those flavour profiles. It was a combination of ages. Putting an age statement in a bottle is like telling Picasso only to paint in blue. Now, Picasso was an incredible artist. You give him just blue paint, he will give you textures, colours, shapes, and create something absolutely beautiful, something incredible, something an absolute work of art. In the same way our blenders do, when they have to create something with an age statement, they create something that's absolutely incredible. But they are in a very small age range. Giving our blenders the ability to use a whiskey, make whiskey that carries no age statement, is like telling Picasso, here is your entire colour palette back. Use it all. Use every colour in the rainbow. And that's the thing I love about whiskies that carry no age statement, that ability to use different ages, different flavours. I suppose the exa another example of that would be if a whisky is absolutely perfect at 11 years old, it is fundamentally at its peak. There is nothing that's going to improve it. If anything, all that's going to happen is there's going to be something that makes it more dominant in one flavour or changes it. Why should we have to wait till it's 12? Why not just use it? And that's the freedom this, these whiskies give. Our master blender, Jim Beveridge, uh, who, although everybody knows him around the industry as being the master blender for Johnny Walker, he is also uh, responsible for the creation of all of our whiskies. He has final say over everything. And he always talks about young whiskies offer a vibrancy, an intensity of flavour, because they've not been as subdued and developed as the, by the wood. Whereas older whiskies offer a sophistication and balance. So you combine those two together, you're going to get something quite magical. So, anyway, I've teased you enough with this. The colour isn't quite intense, it's quite a dark colour. Like I say, when I said about the colours before, it's very much a guide, it gives you an idea of what to expect. This is quite an intense dark colour, but there is first fill American oak. So the first time we've used it since it's come from America, it's what we class as a first fill barrel or a first fill cask. So there's going to be a big, big intensity of flavour and colour. On the nose, you get that wonderful, creamy, rich. Something quite Manuka honey, quite something quite pure, fresh, hill honey about it. And of course in the taste. You get that sharp citric note from the grassy character the whiskey makes in the first place, but it's got a lovely balanced, soft, honeyed finish to it. Almost like buttered toast to a certain extent towards the end.